Ian Dixon and I, who are both still directors of the charity, um, had met. We actually were involved in another pre-existing cancer charity after we were both successfully treated um, when we were a lot younger, in my case when I was 19 years old. Um, and Ian and I had met and uh, at that time there was no charity, in Gla no cancer charity associated with the Beatson. Others in Manchester and London had charities. So we formed Friends of the Beatson. I brought this because in, in, in fact in March 1996 we had our first sporting dinner. Uh, which is one of the first events we, we ran. So 1995, we formed Friends of the Beats, and really just as a very small kind of um, personal um, way to give something back and, and, and raise a little bit of money. We didn't know how much at that time. So that was the very start of Friends of the Beats. So we had, as you say, um, for the next, uh, must have been 15 or so years, um, uh, Friends of the Beatson operated, we raised money, we raised about £4 million in that period, just very much, no employees, no, no, no staff, just our families really and friends. And uh, we were all about well-being and, um, and practical comfort and support for patients. At the same time, we were very familiar with the, the Beatson Oncology Centre Fund, which was the, really the repository within the hospital for money that grateful families had, had donated. And, and we, we knew Dr. Robertson, Jerry Robertson's also a fellow director of the charity today. And, uh, and we decided amongst ourselves, really the three of us and one or two others, that if we could combine and, and, produce, and create something new, which was Beats and Cancer Charity, it would be even more powerful. And it would do more good and it would have a broader um, uh, objective, set of objectives. And that's how Beats and Cancer Charity was formed. started off just as a we'll have an event and raise some money um, and of course 15 years later it was a it was a proper business we had employees we had the well-being center had already been established and and therefore a I, I fundamentally believe and I, I believe it for kind of good and bad reasons I mean the fact is we're all affected by cancer all of us I was as I said to you and I, you have been and we all have been and so there's no reason why why the charity associated with Scotland's largest oncology unit can't actually one day be one of Scotland's largest charities because we're, we're all affected. So it's a kind of a, a good and a bad, you know, we, we wish there was no need for the charity at all, but the feedback we get from patients is incredible um, as to what's been done over the years. And so, yeah, I think you, you feel the responsibility to, to keep it going and to grow it and to make it better and bigger. Uh, no, I, I can't. Um, it's funny because we're saying actually I held up my, my teacup earlier and I still, Lindsay, from the very start, I remember it being launched, I remember the posters on the, on the underground, the Glasgow subway, um, when it first came up and, and it was an extraordinary feeling um, to walk past posters that were, were now in public view that I'd been in some way involved in, um, to now have, you were telling me earlier of a fundraising initiative, um, to now hear about what's going on in something I had a small part to play in is, is um, quite humbling actually. the generosity of people often in the toughest circumstances is is just humbling and um, quite emotional at times you know so you know I think the all of us um, have tried to help in some way and thousands and thousands of people continue to try to help and I think just that in a difficult world we've lived in with the last couple of years with the pandemic and everything it's an incredibly strong bond and I think I would also add you know, I think the charity has done even more perhaps than fundraising because that yellow symbolism of hope and positivity actually hopefully reflects on the people who really matter, which are the clinicians within the Beatson. Because the Beatson before Beatson Cancer Charity formed wasn't yellow, it didn't have that logo, it didn't have that feel. It was a place that would be probably a little bit hushed, you know, something you didn't want to mention. And it's just awfully special in something that can be really, really upsetting for, for any of us to have smiling faces, success, happiness, you know, successful outcomes as well as uh, fundraising and, and making a difference. So, you know, I, I, I think I mean, there's so many positives. Um, every event I, I'm lucky enough to go to, whether I'm, I'm just an anonymous runner <laughs> or whether I'm actually involved as a, a member of the board is, uh, is hugely um, special. So we'll, we, we've got the 25th sporting dinner going to be happening on the 12th of May in the Hilton. 
and uh, I'm very, very fortunate in saying I'm one of those who've been at All25. Um, and the very first one for those older than, than you and older than others who can remember the Albany Hotel in Glasgow. The very first one was in the Albany Hotel. And actually, I, I showed you this. This was the programme from the very first um, um, sporting dinner. You see, it's the old logo. It's the old Friends of Eatson logo. It was on the 28th of March, 1996. And so for me, every year not the last two years so you could you could smile and say it's taken us 27 years to have the 25th dinner for obvious covid reasons but but the events we've had uh, lindsay the the speakers we've had the the, the excitement the the nervousness the, the money raised i mean that, that that event itself will have raised two million pounds over, over these years um i think that that's been a real I, I, and you know my kids weren't born at the time with the first dinner and now they're adults and they come along to the dinner so yeah from from my journey I was going to say you know my, my journey it's been uh, that event's been very special the fact that people are finding new ways to raise funds f ways that I would never have even thought of is the excitement and, and I'm sure more people will, will, will find other new ways to raise funds as well as attending established events yeah I mean just keep supporting it please you know some of you will be like me you'll, you'll, you'll con it'll become a lifelong commitment um, others will um, come involved for a period of time and, and, and do something and whether it's either or just please keep supporting it because the feedback um, from the, the patients who matter today it's not people like myself who were successfully treated in the past it's it's the patients that are at the beats and as, as we are talking today that matter and uh, the feedback we get is extraordinary uh, quite humbling as to the difference that's made by the charity um, and so being a part of that I think something we should all be proud of